plus size luxury and today I thought it'd be fun to look on purse form uh, they have different threads dedicated to different designer houses and I really like going on there although there can be some drama associated with you know online forums and stuff like that they are a wealth of information you can get pictures of upcoming collections on there that have been leaked as well as just chit chat about the brand so particularly under the Chanel threads, there is this thread called what are some of your unpopular Chanel opinions? And I thought it'd be cool if we go through a few of those. I'd also like to hear from you guys if you agree with my reaction or you agree with the original poster. This forum is open to the public, of course, so you can do your own little deep dive if you want to read more because I just find it very interesting. I think fashion is very subjective, so we're all entitled to our opinion and this is just all in good fun okay all right so this member says my unpopular opinion chanel 22 is the laziest design ever it is just a drawstring bag replaced with chanel wording on the bag which is too loud no offense <laughs> just my silly personal opinion this has about i don't know 38 or 39 likes which is high for this particular thread so my reaction to that, um, there are a couple of the Chanel 22s that I have been intrigued by, particularly the non-leather ones. So I know in 22B, they had a velvet one that came out with sequined uh, Chanel logo over it. That seemed intriguing to me. And then I know that for the preview that I just did for 23P, that they're coming out with a denim version. That's intriguing. Uh, the 22 bag has just been fraught with so much like drama that... I'm just going to stay away from it. I feel like it needs a couple more years of production for them to fine tune any of the issues. Uh, when I, as I said in my preview video, I was a little surprised. It seemed to lack forethought and design, but I've heard a couple from uh, my subscribers and they're just like, I love the bag. Uh, a couple of YouTubers that I follow also have and love the bag. So I guess there's definitely a market for it, but I tend to agree with this poster. To me, I wish they had put more thought into the design of it. So, um, yeah, that's an interesting one. Let me know your opinion. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's see. Uh, un my unpopular opinion, many bags at Chanel, especially the brightly colored ones with lots of charms on the chain and the heart-shaped bag reminds me of bags you can find at Claire's. Whoa, <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't been to Claire's since I've been a teenager. There's definitely a very girly aesthetic to Chanel. Um, so I just, I disagree with this poster. I feel like the heart bag and all that kind of stuff, it's fun. It's lighthearted. It's not meant to be a super childish. Uh, and I've seen people rock it and yeah, I don't get that vibe from it. It's supposed to be a fun out there over accessorized brand. So yeah, I, I disagree. I don't think the heart bag and um, the uh, chains that have the embellishments on it. I don't think those are childish. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see what we have here next. My unpopular opinion, wearing the CC brooches on clothing and accessories that are not Chanel, in my opinion, only makes it like look like you're trying to make the specific piece you put on appear to be Chanel. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So I think this hits on two different topics, mixing brands in an outfit. So you're wearing Chanel and you're wearing Fendi or something like that. And then it also hits on, can you wear a high item with a low item? Uh, so I feel like you can totally mix brands. I have no problem with that. Um, the only where I see it could go wrong if it's just like logo on logo on logo, I feel like that might clash. But like, for instance, having a Fendi bag with a Hermes Twilly. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, maybe some CC earrings with their Fendi purse, or, you know, I have like my Chanel bag. I like to wear my Gucci tights. I feel like those are subtle enough and they complement each other, and that's perfectly fine. I can see where it can go a little overboard if you have like a ton of logos and it's just like, what's happening here? Make up your mind. And then mixing high-low, I personally do this all the time. I love Dior Mitzas and I like to put them on my plain leather Madewell bags because I wear these when I'm out with friends and when I'm with my boyfriend and family and stuff, but to run errands in, I just take my Madewell bags because I'm just going to be throwing them about the place. So um, just to make them a little bit more special and to change up the look every once in a while, I like to put the Mitza on there. So. 
I don't see anything wrong with um, accessorizing your more plain items of clothing or plainer bags with different design pieces. You know, fashion is subjective, as I said before, and I just think it's a fun thing to do. So yeah, I <laughs> I disagree with this poster. Um, I mean, we all can't wear like, I feel like when you buy ready to wear from these fashion houses too, I'm not buying like a plain turtleneck from them. I want like a very signature, classic, detailed piece. So I'm going to put my CC brooch on my Eloquy turtleneck because I'm not going to buy basics from, you know, a high end brand. So I, I, I disagree with this person. I only buy caviar bags. Lambskin is too delicate delicate and doesn't last. I love maxi bags. Since at least 2015, CC custom jewel costume jewelry, I think she meant, looks cheap and fake, hoping it changes. Even some of the pearl necklaces look awful. And then Chanel ready to wear is not consistent in quality. Okay, ton of different stuff in here. So let's start from the bottom. Uh, Chanel ready to wear not consistent quality. I have been getting more into ready to wear and I, you know, I love like looking at the videos, researching about the different collections and what to look for and the fabrics and stuff like that. And uh, recently with this 22B collection, I've been hearing a lot of people talk about how all of the buttons need to be reinfor reinforced by a tailor. And to me, it's just like buttons are just popping off. Like this is, this is crazy to me. So I definitely agree. And I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. Actually, I think it's pretty well known that there's been definite quality issues and consistency issues across Chanel right now. I think they're having a boom and they cannot keep up with demand, basically. Um, pearl necklaces look awful. Um, the costume jewelry looks cheap and fake. So I've also said that I don't care for champagne gold hardware. I don't care for the champagne gold fashion jewelry or costume jewelry that they've been making. It just looks too washed out, looks super fake to me. And I just don't get it. I, I wish they would do either. If you don't want to do a yellow gold, maybe just throw in some silver pieces and some rose gold. Rose gold is used by fine jewelry brands now to sort of soften the harshness of gold on the skin tone. So that makes sense over using champagne gold because to me it just looks like super, super cheap and fake. So I actually totally 100% agree. And I have been patiently waiting for them to come out with more yellow gold uh, costume jewelry so I can um, buy some more because I am looking for a brooch. I love maxi bags. You know, as I said, I die for my jumbo. I want at least five more. <laughs> like, I am a big bag girl. I just really love them. Um, I haven't tried on the maxi yet. Uh, I feel like because the chain drop is apparently supposed to be shorter than the jumbo, it wouldn't work for me. But I think big bags are awesome and I cannot wait until there's a resurgence. I see some trickling back in, but we've been talking about in the community, we've been talking about big bags coming back for like two years now. And I still feel like mini bags are like super hot. So I, I don't know. And then just looking at some of the collections that are coming up next year, it seems like they're still pushing the um, small bags. So I'm guessing it's a profit thing, I'll be honest. Less materials, same cost, high profit margin. Mm. And then finally she says, I only buy caviar bags. Lambskin is too delicate and does not last. Um, you know, just as we were talking about consistency, the um, lambskin that Chanel uses varies in cons consistency. So I wouldn't say that lambskin is delicate. I think it just changes from season to season. So you can have lambskin that's super durable and buttery and thick, or you can have um, some that are super delicate. So it's just up to us. I guess the onus is on us to go in store and actually like feel the bag, but I'm not buying caviar everything. I feel like there are certain instances where lambskin can be durable and thick and awesome. Um, but I do understand like caviar is like foolproof. I totally get it, but I don't think lambskin is the same from season to season. So we cannot say a sweeping comment that all lambskin is delicate and therefore it's just not going to be durable. So I disagree with that statement. Okay. This person says dad sandals equals grandpa sandals. Okay. Uh, what do you guys think about the dad sandal craze? Okay, 
All right, let me just say why I don't like it. So the, right now, that's something that's really hot is the Hermes Cypri, Cypress sandal. Um, also the Chanel uh, sort of dad sandal style. I don't know if they have a particular name, but I think they're on, unflattering on almost everyone's foot. It makes your foot look wide. It, I don't know, it's just so unflattering. And I get that they're super comfortable and I am all about comfort. But if I'm rocking a designer shoe, I want it to be a special moment. I want to be like, you know, oh my gosh, what shoe is she wearing? Oh my goodness, blah, blah, blah. Like that set it off. Like I want that energy from a shoe and I'm not looking necessarily for comfort. If I wanted comfort, then I would just go for um, my old reliable comfortable shoes, which which brand of shoes do I currently like right now? Um, I'll pop up the name, but I have a brand that I go for my 100% leather comfortable shoes okay so uh i do agree with this poster i don't get the hype behind it i understand that you want something comfortable but they're just to me i have not seen one that looks good on a person um this is just my opinion as i said and i get that if you want to have like something comfortable and something chanel or hermes or whatever you know you do you but i just feel like when it comes to a designer shoe i want something to be like bow like in your face like this is a moment this is magic and I'm not getting that energy from dad sandals <laughs> okay okay so this person said there's nothing special about the unicorn caramel color the color has been released three times already in the 19 bag okay so the caramel color I'll pop a picture of this up here uh yeah you know, it's so crazy to me. Ever since we had the new director, I think her name is Vivienne or something like that. Um, before this, we have never repeated a color ever, I think, in the entire history of Chanel. Like, you know, they'll maybe bring something back similar, but it will never be exactly the same. So I was shocked when I saw Caramel offered three or four seasons in a row. And I get it. It was a hot seller. So why not make something that's guaranteed to make money? I get it. But, um, and I'm happy that people were able to get the color, but I just feel like now they should just make that color a classic color, put it in their Rev line, which Rev means it's going to be repeating every uh, season and, um, you know, just put it in their classic line because I think the beige clear is too yellow, honestly. And if you get it with the silver hardware, it's a bit cooler, but still overall, I don't think people are after that type of beige anymore. They want more tan. Um, similar to like Hermes uh, gold. They want that kind of color. So this is Chanel's answer to it. I think they should just put it in the classic line. I don't believe it's a unicorn. And honestly, you know, I feel really bad because because in the past we've been told, oh, and Chanel never repeats colors. So when it came out and people resold it, it was a huge markup only to be um, able to buy it in the next collection. So I was like, oh my gosh, can you imagine like, you paid X amount over retail and then you see it come out next season and you're like super gutted because you just like spent money for no reason. So that's, uh, yeah, I, I, that made me feel a little bit weird. Um, so I don't consider it a unicorn color anymore. It's come out plenty of times. Um, and honestly, my opinion is that they should just move it to the classic range and call it a day. Well, I'll just end it there. Uh, I think that was fun. I think I want to do, they have one for Hermes. They have one for Dior. So I think I want to do another video. Uh, with some more unpopular opinions. So I thought this was fun. Uh, let me know if you enjoy this type of video and I'm curious to hear your opinion on any of the unpopular opinions that I shared today as well as my reaction to them. Um, I will talk to you next time. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I should be having another giveaway coming up soon. We hit 200, so yay! I'm very excited. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!